Hello friends. If you're new, welcome to my channel. If you are coming back, welcome back. I really do appreciate the patronage. Today I'm going to be talking about Jehovah's Witnesses modern day cult. And yes, Tony, it is a cult. No matter what you think or say, let's go. In this episode, I forego major doctrinal issues to discuss how Watchtower became a personality cult under Russell, and under Rutherford, the personality cult became what it is now accurately referred to as a cult. I don't care if you like the term, Tony. Watchtower is a cult, and this episode shows why. Some quotes in this episode have ellipses that I am not noting for sake of time, but if you want to look them up, you can. I am not hiding anything. Both during his life and after his death, he was idolized by his followers, as can clearly be seen in the following quotes. In the June 1915 Bible Students Monthly, Dr. David P. Jackson wrote, quote, He surrendered the most brilliant opening for obtaining wealth and power in order to take up a humble religious work. End quote. In excerpts from eulogies at his funeral, W. E. Van Amberg said, quote, Today we are paying our last loving tribute to the memory of one of God's noblest men, end quote. Rutherford added, quote, Thou hast by the Lord been crowned a king, and through the ages thy name shall be known, and thy enemies shall come and worship at thy feet, end quote. At the same time Russell was being eulogized, the society was being described in terms that depicted itself as his collective successor. By so doing, Rutherford was also establishing his own legitimation as leader of the society. Rutherford rigged the 1917 Watchtower election and continued as its president for 25 years. He immediately removed the directors that Russell had appointed. He lived in luxury even during the Great Depression when people had to scrape together money just to eat and live. He needed to challenge the doctrine that Russell was the servant before he could change Russell's teachings. This attack began in 1926. From that point on, the organization took Russell's place as the faithful and wise servant or the faithful and discreet slave and the mouthpiece of God. In short, from then on, Rutherford's organization, not Russell, was to be worshipped. Because he had ousted all of Russell's supporters, he had total control and power. Only the membership thought otherwise. People at headquarters knew that Rutherford was in total control. It was now the quote-unquote theocratic organization that would give spiritual direction, and Rutherford began a totalitarian reign that was totally foreign to scripture, complete with the restrictive rules, regulations, and dogma that still govern Watchtower today. In the 1930s, Congregations increasingly lost their autonomy to the organization. By 1938, every bit of autonomy of the local congregation was gone, with the organization assuming power 
to make all local appointments. Rutherford died on January 8, 1942, just as he had made his own theology after Russell's death. Fred, the Oracle Franz, with Norr's approval, began his own change in theology, which sometimes included reintroducing Russell's old teachings. Groose postulates that this was the quickest way they have for the membership to forget about Rutherford and focus on the quote-unquote new light and the organization that continued to demand adulation from its members. Well, friends, that's it for today. If you like this kind of content, hit the like button, press the subscribe button, and if you would like to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal links are in the description, along with the source that I used for this video. If you wish to support this channel, you may do so on my PayPal link. Question everything and never be afraid. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, goodbye.